happens is when the SI joint gets out of whack, the bones move apart and like grind. Oh. And it's much more common in women because the connection between the pelvis, the ilium, ilium and the sacrum, the bottom of the spine, yeah. is, is not as solid as in men. So it starts that way, and then women have wider hips, so that also causes more, um, less connection between the bones. So when you move wrong, which turns out to happen when you leave the sitting bones down, but you turn your spine without moving the sitting bones along with it. Remember when I say in a twist, turn your yeah. hips, ribs, and shoulder? Yes. Because if you don't turn your hips first, that can cause your spine to turn without moving the pelvis, and you cause the problem. Yeah. So that's what I did. I turned without moving my pelvis, apparently, and it was horrible. It was just so painful. So I looked in all the instructions, and it turns out that doing twists is actually really good for it. So I did the, the one chiropractic twist where you put your foot on the thigh of the other leg and then yeah. you go over. And I did it on the couch so that my knee actually went all the way over the side so that I was getting even more twist, and it popped it back. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was so lucky. <laughs> So what happens when it's in place is, especially when you stand up, the bones sit down into each other correctly. And what you need to do once you damage the thing is you need to strengthen it. And to strengthen it, you need to do things like back bends and um, that little um, pelvic tilt that we do on, yeah. the, on the floor. So we'll do some of that just to kind of put everything in, in place. Okay. And a few twists. And we'll just do a little sit seated um, warm up to start with because the, um, the forward bends aren't necessarily really good for it. Neither are just the side to side motions unless it's yeah. already back in place. So you gotta be really careful. Come into a comfortable seated position and if the cross legs are uncomfortable, you can go into staff position, which is a little bit less strenuous on that lower back. So it's an area that's kind of two inches to the side of your spine and about two or three inches below your waist where the connection happens. And if it pops out a joint, you will note right there, it's about the size of a quarter. That really hurts. So kind of push the sitting bones back, and that helps get things in the correct alignment. And then just pivot from the hip joint and just gently bring your, your chest a little bit forward and you'll feel that stretch along that back there. So don't go too far. Just leading with your chest and chin. And then sitting back up, and then ribs in and rounding. And then just let that area get a little stretch. And then pull the ribs forward, chest forward, look up. And of course, if you're having that sacroiliac joint in pain, you want to do things minimally, but you can do them as much as feels okay. And then just round forward again, ribs back. Inhale, chest forward, looking up, shoulders down. And then back to straight, hand on one side, other arm out, palm to the ceiling, over your shoulder, and just a little side stretch. So one side, when you have an injury at that sacroiliac area, one side will be in pain and the other one won't. And that's a real signal that that's the issue for you. So just let the sides stretch, and if that's your injured side, 
stretching it just gently can help put it back into place. And then coming back up, release the hand to the back. Other arm out, palm to the ceiling over your shoulder. Again, just that side stretch, doing the opposite side. And you'll know which side is the side that bothers you. So this is the side, left side that I injured. And then back up and release. So lots of twists are good to get things back in place and to help stabilize it. So bring one knee, one foot in so the heel is close to your body and then pull your arm around it and hold it in. Other arm comes out, stretch way up. And then as you exhale, turn looking at the hand so that you're moving your hip first. So this hip kind of comes back a little as you move, ribs and then shoulder. And then bring the hand to the floor behind you. Just gently press into the hand and stretch up through the spine. And then if you want and it feels okay, exhale and deepen the twist. So again, pulling the hips around first, ribs, and then your upper body. So just making sure that you only go as far as feels right here. And then hand coming back up, follow it back around to the center and release. And bring your leg back out. Just notice how that's feeling through your back as you become aware of the circulation. And then the twist for the opposite side, pull that one in. And if you've got the injury, you may find that that foot needs to stay out a little bit more. And then again, wrapping the arm around, pulling it in as much or as little as it's right for you. Heel right in front of that sitting bone, arm out. And again, follow the hand around, moving the hip first as you come into the twist. So hips, ribs, and shoulder move. Hand comes to the floor close to you. Stretch from the sitting bones up. And with the sitting bones slightly up, exhale deep and into that twist. So you want to be kind of leaning off the sitting bone on your bent knee and allowing yourself to move freely through that whole pelvis area. And then bring the hand back up, follow it back around, and release. And coming back into staff position, just feel your body. And we're going to strengthen the low back a little bit. So bring your feet to the end of the mat and roll onto your back. And then just allowing your body to comfortably find your sacrum. Just move the sitting bones slightly toward your heels and then bending your knees, pull the heels in where your hips knees straight up. So remember a little inner rotation at the top of the thigh to keep the knees straight up as you're in that bent knee position. And then sliding the sacrum down, press the whole spine into the floor. And then just gently moving the sitting bones toward the floor, lifting your ribs so you get the space under your back as much or as little as you want. So this strengthens that connection once you've got that SI joint back in place, particularly it's good for you to do this a lot so that you get that whole area a little bit more stable. And of course, it also helps your abdominals, tones them, strengthens them as well. Going into the forward bend, and then into the backward bend, working those back muscles a little bit more, allowing them to be more supportive of that joint. So of course, on your own, you want to do this quite a while so that you're allowing that strengthening to be effective. So like 5, 10, even 15 minutes if you can. Does a really good job of working that area. But that would take a lot of our time, so we won't do a whole lot more. So just come back to your neutral position. And we're going to give it a little stretch again. 
So sitting bones towards your heels, that, that connected to the floor, and then lift one leg and put the ankle above the knee on the opposite leg. And then depending on how much movement you want in that lower back area, you can push away with your hand or you can just gently move the knee away on your own. And if that's working for you and you want a little bit more work going on in that lower back, you can put your opposite hand behind the thigh of the bent knee leg, put on the foreleg and lift that foot off the floor, pulling it towards you. So again, this is going to be a kind of asymmetric work on that lower back area as you strengthen and realign through that lower back area. And then if your foot is up, bring it back down. Release your hands to the floor. Lift your leg and straighten it out. Knee facing you, foot facing you. And then bring that foot down, back into bent knee position. <clears throat> so just feel what's going on. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other leg. So this is going to be my torso. So again, lift your leg, cross that ankle above the knee, and push the feet, knee away, either gently by itself or with your hand if you love it. And again, you can pull in with the Hand behind the thigh on your foot down leg and pick that foot up off the floor. So just keep noticing how that pelvis is moving as you are in this position and just do what's right for your body. Take a breath. And if your foot is up, exhale, bringing it down, release the hands. Lift the leg and straighten it out, and put your foot back on the mat. Just take a moment there. And again, you can do that strengthening move, lifting your ribs, and then pulling the whole spine down. And just allow your body to adjust into that position. And then with your knees bent, we're going to roll over to the side and sit back up. So again, coming into staff position. So just adjust, getting those sitting bones back a little bit. The pelvis wants to be tipped a little bit forward. <clears throat> and then we're going to do a forward bend. So be gentle as much as you need to. So pull the knee in again. And you can wrap an arm around, or you can bring it inside. And we're going to bring the arms out and up over your shoulder. So try not to get this knee coming out too much to the side. And reach forward towards your foot. So again, you want to be moving that pelvis asymmetrically. So this foot down position leg, that hip is up slightly, sitting bone off the floor as you push into this forward. And just go as far as your body wants. And then come back up, release your arms, and extend your leg. And doing the other side, pull the knee in, make your adjustments, bring your arms up. And again, slide that sitting bone back on the bent knee as you reach for the foot on this side. And again, just coming as far forward as you want, keeping your chest leading into that forward bend. And then inhale and release the arms and extend that leg. So we're going to do another twist. And this time, again, move those sitting bones back a little bit to start with. Bend your knee, pull it in and get that adjusting. And then we're going to kind of put your hand on the floor, probably help, and we're going to bring that opposite arm across the leg on this one. So as you do that, go ahead and lift that sitting bone 
And then as you exhale, turn coming into the twist. So just bringing the hand from the floor behind you a little bit further. So you're not really pulling with the arm into the knee until you get your hip and rib and shoulder already turning. And then if you love the twist and you want a little more, then you can use that arm on the leg to move even further into the twist. But you don't need to do that ever. So just keep lengthening up through the spine, exhaling, and relaxing into whatever twist version you are. And then lengthen up. And as you exhale, release the arms back to the center and bring your leg back out. And we'll do the same thing, of course, on the other side. So pull that knee in, adjust on your sitting bones. Keep this one slightly up, the hand to the floor to do that, and bring your arm all the way across. So kind of sliding this leg forward, Exhale, and begin twisting from the hip, rib, and shoulder, deepening with that hand moving around behind you as you get further into your twist. And again, just as much or as little as your body would like. Breathe, exhale, just relaxing. And again, lengthening, release your hands, turn back to the center, and bring your leg back out. So feel your pelvis, your lower body. Just notice how that's feeling in this position. And then we're going to, again, bring the feet to the end of the mat. Sitting bones connected. Reach up through the crown. Just think with your chest a little bit forward, giving it a little stretch. And then back up. And then using your core for support or your hands if you need to, again, come back down onto your back. So we're going to do a couple more twists because twists are really good for helping this area to realign and to stay positioned correctly. So bring your arms out to T position, palms up. And then bend one knee and put that foot on the opposite thigh. We're going to roll all the way over onto your side and bring your hands together and the knee all the way to the floor. Keep your head down. If you can't keep your head down and it's straining your neck, put some padding under your head. So take the hand that's Touching the floor onto your knee to hold the knee in place. Bring your other arm right above your shoulder. Looking up, stretch out through your spine, and then exhale and bring that hand behind you. So keeping the knee down is going to work that lower back area. So only go as far as gravity and your body are willing to go. If there's pain, stop, don't go there. But what you'll find is this can adjust that little connection between the sacrum and the ilium, the pelvis, and put it back into a better place. Chiropractors use this. This is sometimes termed a chiropractic twist for that reason. So the more your arm comes down, the more your middle back comes into the twist. The more you turn your head, your neck and shoulder go into the twist. And the more you keep this knee down, the more that lower back sacrum ilium area is affected. So just allow it to move as much as it wants. You can adjust this knee if you think it will help to bring that bone connection into better alignment. So you may feel popping little sensations as you do that. It's okay as long as you're not forcing anything. Just allow the connection to realign. And of course, breathe and relax. The more you exhale, the more it releases and relaxes. And then to get out of that position, just let go of your knee 
Whirl onto your back. We adjust the sacrum onto the mat and extend your leg. Feel lots of circulation, especially through that pelvis area, lower back here. So if you do that on your own and you really displace things, you can keep that knee not just to the side, but actually extend it over the edge of the bed or the couch or whatever you're on, so that you get even a little bit more adjustment. But remember, just gently move yourself. And of course, we'll twist to the other side. So again, like those sitting bones slightly, bend your knee, bring that foot up onto your thigh, and then rolling all the way over. And the whole pelvis moving together, hands together and knee down. That left arm on the floor comes holding your knee down, other arm right above your shoulder. So not up toward your head, not down toward your hip, but straight up. And then looking at it as you lower that arm behind you, coming into your twist. So knee down. If there's pain, of course, you can let the knee up. Shoulder coming down. If there's pain, again, you don't have to bring that arm so far into it. Never pain. Pain is a sign that something is wrong. So go ahead and breathe. Turning your head, looking at that arm behind you for your upper neck and shoulder. And arm and shoulder coming down for that middle back. And that knee staying down. And the whole body turning from that pelvis area for your twist. So deep breaths, just relaxing. And again, letting things adjust as much or as little as they need on this side. When you're ready to release, let go of your knee. Roll onto your back, readjust your pelvis onto the floor, and relax. So feel the circulation. Notice especially through that sacroiliac area, as well as through your spine. So twists tend to balance the body and the energy, and they're also preparing you for your meditative relaxation. So we're going to do one more twist before we get to that release. So again, pressing your back down, bend your knees, heels in toward your hips, keeping the sitting bones going toward your heels, connecting that lower back. Bring your knees up off the feet off the floor, knees right above your hips. You can have your hands, palms up or down. Palms down is a little bit more stable and keeps the shoulders and shoulder blades on the floor. We're going to roll the knees to one side again. If they don't come all the way down, put some padding under them. You don't need to go too far. Remember, you want to be gentle where you need to for this position. So going into that, turn your head toward the arm behind you again. Keep the shoulders and shoulder blades down. And only as deep into that position as your body wants. So once again, if that's the iliac area is a problem and you're feeling like it's okay in this position and you want a little bit more you can move your knees toward your elbow right along the front. So just deepen as much or as little as your body wants and relax. And then heels back toward your hips and roll back onto your back. Bring your feet down to the floor. And again, just feel what's going on in your body. And of course, we're going to twist to the other side and even things out. So once again, sitting rows toward your heels, hands, palms up or down, shoulders to the floor. Pressing the back down, lift your feet, knees right above your hips. And again, rolling all the way to the side, Keeping that pelvis and lower back working together as you twist. Head turning toward the opposite side, shoulders and shoulder blades staying down. Knees coming as far, padding if you need it, and stretching a little bit more if that feels right. And again, just breathe and breathe.
And again, a few times, just exhaling, letting the tension release. Remember, never forcing anything, just allowing the twist to happen. And then heels back toward your hips. And then again, rolling your whole body together and bringing the feet to the ground. Take a moment, readjust your positioning as much as you need to. And relax. And then bringing your hands near your hips, palms up. You can keep the knees bent for a relaxation. You can move them a little further away and tip the knees slightly toward each other or put some padding under your knees if you want to keep things bent which is going to be a little bit easier on your lower back, or you can extend your legs out all the way if that feels comfortable for you. So just go ahead and breathe. Exhale and just let your body sink. So relax, especially through the hips and pelvis, as well as through the torso. Roll your thighs a little bit toward each other and keep the knees up. You can just let them sink apart a little bit more. Just do whatever is appropriate for your pelvis, letting it relax as much as it needs. Shoulders and shoulder blades down, hands, palms up to keep those shoulders releasing. Soften your jaw, your throat, your face. And let your body grow heavy. And just allow it to sink deep into that surface beneath you. Let your belly move as you breathe and just relax. And as you breathe deeply and allow your body to sink into that surface beneath you, just let Mother Earth support you. And allow your body just to deepen into the earth and rest, relaxing anything that's tight. And as you breathe more deeply, you relax more fully. Just let your awareness release your body, allowing it to relax all on its own. And as your body softens and sinks, just let it go. And as your body releases from your mind, just let other thoughts that come to your mind release as well. Allow your mind to drift as easily as your breath. Exhaling tension. Exhaling thoughts. Just let the, the content of your thoughts drift in and out without awareness. No need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future, no need to think about pain, to figure out anything about releasing it now. Just let your body do the work. Let your mind release. Knowing that thoughts will keep coming, just let them go without attention. And as you breathe more deeply and you relax more fully, just allow your awareness to find the peace within you. Deepen into the peace in your body, in your mind, just being peace.
And of course, keep relaxing as long as you'd love. Or begin drawing energy and awareness back to the room, to your body, to the moment. Getting ready for the rest of your day. When you're ready for that final yoga heart of appreciation, remember to be gentle. Pressing your back down, just gently bringing your knees up or leaving your feet on the floor if you prefer. And just let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work it does for you every day. And then sliding your hips back, roll over to the side, bringing your knees together to the floor. Use your hands as you support yourself, sitting back up and getting ready for the rest of your day. Thanks for joining me.